Hey folks, how are you? Hope you're all doing very well. Before we begin the lesson, I just want to remind you to leave a like and subscribe if you like my content. That really, really helps me uh, to continue making high quality content. And if possible, share with some friends or with an online community that you like. That also really, really helps. Second thing is, if you want to be on the early access for my test driven development course and get access to some free lessons, the link is on the description. You can subscribe. Um, I expect to send the first couple lessons on the beginning of August. So if you want to be a part of it, the link is on the description. Also, if you want to be a part of my newsletter, I send cool links that I find throughout the week every Saturday. The last one I sent on Monday, but that's an exception. You can also find the link on the description. Well, with that said, let's go to the lesson. Talk to you in like a second. Hey guys, hope you are all doing very well. Today we have a very quick lesson about pipelines. Pipelines are really, really, really useful. I'm going to give you guys an example. In the past, I had a ticketing startup and fraud prevention is huge, especially in Brazil. In order to determine which orders we should manually review, we had an automated system that did various checks, including in the governed database, and determine if, a, if, if payment should be flagged and should be manually reviewed. And we did this through a pipeline. A pipeline is basically uh, a pipe, and you send something through the pipe, and it kind of stops at several points. So let's say you have a payment object, which is what we have on this example, and you send it through a pipe, and here we say we have three pipes. We have a pipe that verifies that a order is over $100, a pipe that verifies that the creation date minus the user creation date is less than 600 seconds, that is in minutes, and a pipe that verifies if the user is flagged. That means that it's been flagged in the past. And if any of those are true, we want to flag the order. But you can do anything with the pipe. Middlewares are built upon upon pipes. Sorry, I was going to say types. Up, upon uh, pipes. This is very hard to say. Pipes. I mean pipes. They're built upon pipes. Uh, when you have three middlewares, um, for instance, in a row, they are sent through pipes. Each middleware runs, then it calls the other pipe. That's why you use that uh, little next, and you pass the middleware. I don't remember the correct notation, but it's something like that. So anyway, we already have the payment model, it's the same as the other lessons. Um, if we go here, we can see what we are doing. So um, let me just change this to one. Uh, I have three payments. Let's go. Let's check this here first. We go to Tinker and save payment with the user, all of them. Uh, what? Oh, sorry. So let's check the first payment. So we can see that the first payment is over $100. Um, it was created at 12 a.m. 15 minutes, but the user was created at 11 p.m. So this is fine. Um, the user is not flagged, so it only falls in the over $100 uh, category. The other one uh, is less than $100, so it doesn't fall on that. But it was created at 11.16 and the user was created at 11.10. So this one falls on the second pipe. This one, okay, value is okay. Uh, date's okay. It has almost an hour of difference. But the user is being flagged. So this one falls under the third pipe. And here's how we create a pipeline. We have this little app helper, and if you've watched the previous lessons, we used resolve to resolve dependencies, and it's the same thing. Let me show you guys. It just returns the app. It's just an alias. It's literally the same thing. I usually use resolve when I'm dealing with my own classes, and I use app when I'm dealing with framework classes. In this case, we are dealing with framework classes. So we instantiate this pipeline class. You can see it here. Then we say that we want to send this payment object through the pipes and here we pass the pipes. It's a very fluent API, so give me a pipeline, send payment 
through these pipes, then do something. This is when the pipeline gets executed. You have to call this. If you don't want to do anything, you just want to return the object, you can call then return. But we want to do something. We want to save the payment after this. Let's take a look at this class. And you can see that it looks a lot like a middleware. It has the handle method. This is the default method for pipelines. You can customize it using the using method. So we could say send it using um, check payment or whatever. We could do this. Well, let's use the default. Um, so we have a handle method. We pass a payment and then we pass a closure. The closure is simply the next middleware. The, I'm, I'm sorry, the next pipe. The code is also very simple. It checks if the amount is over 100 and if the payment hasn't been flagged yet. If so, it flags the payment and it gives a flag reason. The reason why I put this here is just to show you guys that each payment goes um, through all the pipes, but only one of them is currently doing something because of the rules that we set before. Then it returns next pipe. The second one, um, actually this is the third one, let's go to the second one. Same thing if the payment was created less than 600 seconds after the user registered, we want to flag it and mark it as recent. The third one, same thing, if the user is flagged, we want to flag it and mark it as user flagged. So if we check it now, none of the payments have been flagged. And let's run it. Let's run the first one. Oops. Localhost, a thousand payments. Okay, it gave us the object because we are returning it. Let's check how the database looks. And the first one did get flagged expensive. Let's run it for the second payment. Okay, we see it. Let's check it. Okay, it's been flagged because it was recent. Let's run the third one. Oh, I didn't run it. Okay, and it was flagged because the user was flagged. So, pipelines are very exciting. Um, you can do lots of this. Imagine you have a very complex request coming in and you want to do some really difficult future. Instead of doing a bunch of if blocks on your code and doing a lot of when, so you could do, you know, payment query, then when you have something, blah, blah, blah do something. Instead, you can pass the whole object through a pipe and do all of these operations in, a, in its own class. It gets very, you can quickly see what's going on. So, I'm, okay, so I'm flagging expensive orders, I'm flagging recent orders, I'm flagging orders that were made by flagged users. So, if I want, if I just want to change this specific role, I just go to the class. It's isolated here. It's very clear what it does. It just does one thing and pass to the next pipe and your code gets so much more readable. This is useful in lots of situations. Most of us um, have been in situations where using pipes would be a good option, but uh, we either didn't know about it or we forgot about it or we just didn't want to use it. Um, by the way, right here, I'm just using a short closure. So this is just the same as writing, you know, um, function, payment, return, payment, save. It's the same thing. This is a PHP 7.4 feature. So if you are using um, anything less than that, you won't have this available. Anyway, guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. If you've liked it, leave a like and subscribe, share with your friends. Sharing this is so important because um, I want to get this spread out. I want more people to see this kind of content and it gives me energy to keep doing this. Anyway, thank you, thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe because more videos are coming. Bye, see you later.